Hello and welcome to Vintage Magazine Monday. Here we are with our Rod and Custom kicking off January of 1957. We've got a great looking pink Ford on the cover. That is the Barris Built 41 Ford, pink, black, and white. Great little trio of colors. Special edition CAD powered cars, coupes, roadsters, customs, and pickups. And we'll do a little restyling of the 57 Plymouth. And for the Scale Auto fans, we do have a little article with Bud Anderson inside. So stay tuned. Get into the cover. A little Eastern Auto advertisement. Continental kits. There is our contents. We want to preview what we're going to see. Customized with plastic surgery. Fiberglassing kits. At the starting line, if anybody likes to read the articles, I'll try to pan through a few of them for you. A few letters to the editors can be fun reads there, especially when we're going week by week. It stays uh, in context for you. Model car contest, the run custom. Bunch of ads, Ed Iskandarian, club jackets, get the Auto March, a low ball stabilizer designed for General Motors cars, Ford, Dodge, Plymouth, Lincoln, and Mercury. Interesting little piece there. Latest custom look with some decals, little pinstripe and decals. Little clutches there, a ball bearing dual point distributor plate. Cool stuff. Rod and Custom, our cover car. It took seven years to build the Ultimate 41. Seven years ago, the Barris Custom Shop received a caller asking whether his 41 convertible could be updated to modern standards. And it was just seven years before the owner found out that the job he outlined was possible. Long time lapses meant the recustomizing of an already Customized area since new cars presented newer styling trends. However, completion was finally attained not long ago with the spring of three-toned lacquer job. Again, that pink, black, and white rear end like the front. Well, let's read about the front first. Nice little low-down shot. Front end reveals none of the original 41 Ford's characteristics. Lights, fenders, our Oldsmobile bumper is Mercury. The grill was made by bending tubing to a shape, chroming, securing sheet of chrome mesh metal to backside to give deep look. Ford hood carries cad contours. Now back to the rear. Rear end like front hides 41's true identity, hints at Oldsmobile styling. Ford lid was retained, though the corners were rounded, but balance of components were taken from Olds. 41 trying to be a, an old. Some more great shots here. The exhaust pipe protrudes through the fender, is matched by twin on opposite side. Location prevents tip damage when transversing dips. Cool tail dragger look there. Chrome strip marks break between contrasting body shades. Skirted wheel prevents. Brake cooling, so scoops were cut into leading edge of the fender, as photo shows at the right. Taillights housed in the chrome bezels are deeply recessed, adding to Ford's later look. Work started on this in 50, was finished only recently. Few customs have received such extensive styling. Little shot of the front end again. Great looking early custom there lone star speedster onto our cadillac powered cars cad powered 31 model a roadster is built for both go and show owned by wes beverly of corpus christi the blue beauty was driven by builder ken atkinson to a new d-class gadis roadster record at the 56 bonneville national speed trials the new record is 153 miles per hour average over the two-way run. Class records are also held by the Roadster at the Edinburgh and San Antonio, Texas, and Salt Lake City, Utah 
drag strips. Kind of a, a world beater there on the straights. Cool looking roadster there is our caddy engine. Equipment on record setting 53 CAD engine is Edelbrock Manifold with four Stromberg 97 carburetors. Vertex Magneto, Howard F5 Cam, Weber Aluminum Flywheel. 391 cubic inch engine is made to Ford Box with Krager Adapter. Uh, low speedster look. Real clean looking roadster. You can see with a ton of off. 31A roadster bottle. Body is channeled over a Model A frame. Interior Beverly's Roadster is done in blue and white pleated upholstery to complement outside color of car. A 44 dash is used and a Sun Electric tack is mounted at upper left of panel. Pretty good looking Roadster. Here is a CAD powered coupe, the Buckeye Butte. One of Ford's nicest, it's hard to conceive that 414 cubic inches lies beneath the hood of George Montgomery's. Yes, that is the George Montgomery. 34 Ford three window, a 37 LaSalle gearbox connects to connects the horsepower to Dragon Asphalt and the 53 trophies George has at home to tell the story of many runs with a top speed of 115 383. The Ohio George. Until a hood is raised, few would believe that the 56 engine could be shoehorned in place. But with the help of much ingenuity and Mac bar adapter, the Eldorado found a home. Four Strombergs rest atop an Edelbrock manifold. Cam lifters and push rods are Howard's. Definitely a sleeper there with 414 cubic inches. All asphalt passing beneath the Dayton, Ohio Coupes rubber is not measured in quarters. Interior is outfitted for street usage, upholstered in blue and white vinyl plastic. 5x15 Ford with 710s aft, helping giving the 34 the California tilt. Though the 3 inch dropped axle accounts for most of it, along with the Cadillac engine came paint intended for the same make of car. Pastoral blue. One of Georgia's early cars before the famed Willis. Southern Comfort. Nice looking sedan here. Ken Atkinson of Corpus Christi, Texas needed a CAD powered car to pull a CAD powered roadster. Uh, he was the driver of that first roadster. So he forthwith dropped an Eldorado engine into his customized 52 Ford. Then into the caddy went a Weber roller cam. Merger, rocker arms, and exhaust system incorporating lakes and header plugs. Transmission from a Pontiac with a Thunderbird shift setup. Interior of Atkinson's car is done in black and white Naga hide. Shift lever on the floor is Thunderbird unit connected to the Pontiac Hydromatic. Below the black and white Naga hide look. 371 Cubic inch are fitted, but was a squeeze. Primarily purpose of this car was to act as a tow machine for the Texas Roadster on page 16. Atkinson, Ford's owner, is also responsible for much of the work in the Bonneville record holder and is Dragon Driver par excellence. Sharp looking unit. GM all the way. Chevrolet enthusiast Bob Wepfer liked everything about his 49 convertible except the power plant. Not enough to go to suit him, thus the wedding of one GM product with another took place. And Bob not only gets 20 miles per gallon as a result, but the 52 engine produces enough horsepower to satisfy the whims of anyone who slips behind the wheel. Bob and his wife Rosemary hail from Evansville, Indiana, where such goings are quite rare. Not that... Big old CAD V8 shoved under the hood. Pretty neat little basic cruiser. You got the, the teeth and the grill. You got a hasty holler. Oh, what a Cadillac powered Ford pickup. Bill Edwards figured it would take over 400 horses to push his 53 Ford pickup over the 150 mile per hour mark. 
So he put a GMC 471 blower atop a wildly reworked 50 CAD, hung on a hydromatic unit, and stuffed the whole works into his hauler. His estimation of horsepower needed pro proved correct as the pickup literally bellowed across the salt to 151 miles per hour in a winning run. The chassis needed an extra cross member to support the hydromatic transmission. Big Bill substitutes two four throat carburetors in place of the blower. When at home, exterior alterations give no clue to the power available or limit to the, to the dual stacks behind the cab. Pretty wild ride, 150 miles an hour in that old Ford pickup on the GM power plant. And we got another one. Rapid Rambler channeled body dropped a full eight inches has been restored to production perfection by Howard Hansel of San Francisco. In sad disrepair when purchased for $75, Coop now boasts a 20 coat blue lacquer paint job, motorcycle headlights, white sided tires to match roof inset, rear fenders are Bob 32s reversed to fit over 710 by 15s in the back. There is the caddy engine, essentially stocked, proved a tight squeeze in available space, Rever reworking front cross member, new engine mounts and radiator arrangement solved the problem. Get a pretty clean interior there. Great overhead shot showing that rough inset. Good looking 32. Top speed versus lap time part two. And if anybody wants to read that, we will pan through this. Pause, slow down, speed up, whatever you would like. I do find these old school articles pretty interesting. Just a totally different time in the world of motorsports. That little ripper there. world of drag racing it was relatively new especially for the national type events continued on page 62 so we have more at the end hopping up the Ford overhead valves part two there that's engine reworking Sure. Some things are the same, uh, some things have changed, I'm sure. It's all about airflow to make horsepower. Practical restyling here is making the 57 Plymouth Rock. Nice little restyling job there. Chrome treatment, smooth wheels, an open grill. Pretty cool look. You guys want to? Catch reading that one. Rock and Plymouth here. The 57 version has been restyled by using grill parts from a 55 Chevy. Splitting front bumper and removing center section area around the lights has been paneled and aluminum skirts have been added. The 57 Plymouth offers restylus an excellent base with which to work with. Big old car. segment cool drawings an alternate grill suggestion involves use of imperial grill parts not much body work would be needed greatest changes in the bumper which must be split and wrapped around a section below the face bar has been paneled in with metal speed lights for safe nighttime driving would be substituted that's kind of an interesting look there the split grill that's a clean look 
like that simple chrome spear. Very nice. That tail shot. Wonderful drawings and illustrations. And if you want to catch the text. Tail light swapping, 54 Lincoln lights for the 51 Chevy. Great little inspiration how to. Triple threat hauler, the straightforward lines of the 29 pickup. Yeah, a white, light colored. 29 Ford pickup basis of the car. Reasoning back for the selection twofold. First, of this many rods, none had been of the Ultimate and Classics, the A Series. Secondly, the car was to be used for carry all around his horse stable and in competition, as well as a fun car for weekends on the road. A little pickup based on the early A would fit the bill. Interesting little pickup. Very simplistic inside. Even has an up top. The rainy northwest is not conductive to conducive to road string, so an easily removable canvas top has been added. The 29A still boasts perhaps the neatest of forward lines. Bed was raised three inches, short teen 13 inches, fenders aft were lowered three inches, then bobbed a like amount. A little roll bar in there. 286 inch Merc flathead for the get up and go. The man behind the models. Here is our scale model article. Take a look at the pictures. Done a ton of ton of them there. I see some neat stuff going on there. That chopped 55. Pick up. Pretty cool. Man behind the models. Ever since the November issue hit the newsstand, we have literally been besieged with requests for more information on customizing in miniature. Readers of that issue will recall our lengthy spread on the restyling of pint sized plastic automobiles available for about a dollar at all hobby and model shops. A conclusive report on the hobby that is spreading like wildfire among auto aspirants, young and old alike. Most of the revamped models shown in the article were the work of Bud Anderson, who, it turns out, has been at the game of restyling model cars for nearly 15 years. During the daytime, Bud may be found hard at work in the model shop of Ravel Inc., one of the largest makers of detailed plastic automobiles, but at night he turns into his hobby shop, which occupies a two-car garage. Products of his handiwork line shelves covering every available foot of wall space. The illustration shown here disclosed but a small percentage of his car. Bud at Ravel before he became the cat at AMT. Chrysler hardtop undergoes transformation from a stock kit model to a pint size 300 race car. This model was ordered by a customer who pilots a full size counterpart. Ford convertible, a simulated track model, receives detailed painting before shipment. To ragtop driver who ordered a miniature duplicate of his racing convertible. Note roll bar. Not apparent are stiffened frame safety belts and other safety features. Pretty cool. Doing some commission work there. So we can pause that. Let you guys all read. Very cool. Barris meets the truck. Part two. Grill shell completion. Designed and performed exclusively for Rod and Custom by Barris Customs of Linwood, California. In next month's issue, headlights the look of 57. This issue, we are torching and lighting up the front. The all famous and beautiful dream truck. 
Hot Rod Handicap, a must-see for your movie list. Fresh ammunition in the battle for public support for hot rodding is supplied by new half-hour color movie, The Hot Rod Handicap. Sponsored by the Richfield Oil Company Corporation. Its purpose is to educate the public on the value of organized hot rodding and developing driver safety, personal initiative, and technical ingenuity among Americans' youth. Camera car. And hot rod. Well, the old movies. I do have a list of old hot rod movies in my playlist if you guys want to check out some of that. Out of the 48 from South Carolina, we got a 48 Dodge. Pretty simple. A little grill change. From South Dakota, the home state. Got a good looking Chevy there. 49 Chevy. Ever wonder what becomes of some of the most, the more outstanding customs? Here's one of the Grace Automotive Magazine pages, even before the advent of Rod and Custom, and one of the first radical 49 Chevys to emerge from Barris Customs in Linwood, California. Transplant from California to the Dakotas on Rapid City. Bob Lorenberg, and from Northern North California, a 50 Merc. Hard to beat a Merc. Always look good. Great canvas to start with. Here's another Merc. Off color beading between panels of top. Add to the two tone touch of the Nagahide covered seats. Exhaust tips peek through the tips of the bumper and boast lack of bolt heads. Trick here is to weld bolts behind face bar, fill original holes with brass, then send the whole works again to be chrome plated. Definitely a, a nice touch there with a smooth bumper. Seven louvers have been punched into each side of the hood. Though admittedly functional, they also lend an interesting style note to the custom. Good looking front end there. Steel mesh fills void behind unadorned upper bumper bar. Lower face bar was painted to add to colors apparent with note filled hood, restyled headlights. Off the sketch pad, starting 57 off with a multitude of changes. We included this page devoted to some random thoughts about what it makes to design and transportation. How about a 50 Ford? Or a 56 Chevy getting the 57 treatment. Restyling with resin, port 6 in the series. Doing fiberglass work. A Hellion for the Hills. Good looking 32 Chevy. I think the best looking stock 32. Inline power plant. Real classic beauty. Elapsed time versus top speed. Continuation. Interesting little dragster there. Shrubs at the ear and see. Control odds and ends. Pretty much wrapped up. Another interesting little talk. And 
with that, that'll wrap it up for the January 1957 issue of Rod and Custom. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.